<laughs> yeah, so it's Bavuka Balabia Kubo, but uh, we go by Balabia Kubo. Uh, the meaning of the name is uh, the youth have seen the way. But I've always tried to take jobs that give back to this country. The reason why is because, one, they were a place of refuge for my family. We didn't know dad was going to be assassinated. But we got to be here while everything hit the fan over there. Yeah. Canada saved my family's life. Yeah. Should I just leave now? Because I know I'm, my destiny is Uganda. I know that. But should I just be like, thanks, Canada. It's been a slice. Mm. And that's what kind of drove me to begin the search. This week on Vancouver Real, we have the legendary son, Horatius Balabia Kubo. Yeah, my, well, my father is my personal hero, um, as most boys love their dad, you know, but why I love him is because he's bigger than just being my dad. Very charismatic in the sense that he was a very quiet guy. And when he spoke, he spoke like thunder. Like, it was like, you're not going to question it. Always wisdom. And when it dropped it, he wasn't saying it to be like, oh, I'm better than you. He was saying it to be like, this is how you get from point A to point B if you want to make it. You in or out. You can't say you love God if you can't take care of the people. We would be, I was probably four years old, and, you know, I have my older brothers and my younger sisters, and someone would come to the door. Nobody we know, but they need something. My parents would be like, get out of the bed. We'd sleep on the floor all together on this mat. That person gets to the bed, right? Like extreme love. Yeah. And um, my dad, why he's my hero is because you can go today. I'll fly you there right now. And you ask somebody to tell you one thing about him. Just one. Every single person, love. And can you say that you are massively loving right now? If that is what you are aspiring to, then good. If you're just saying, oh, well, you know, I'm enlightened. Okay, well, what does your enlightenment take you? Right? If it doesn't take you to loving somebody else, if you're walking down the street, just a little bit down the street, and you don't have anything that twinges in you that says there has to be something more, there has to be a better way for us to treat one another. If you can't get there, you know, then are you really on the search? Because if the search is about how you feel about yourself, like you just get to the part where I love myself, okay, so then what? Fast forward to the part, you love yourself. Okay, then what? What I care about is that you're young. What are you doing with your youth? Because this is the time where you're moving and shaking. But where's that gap of like 21 to like, you know, 32? Like, where are we? What are we doing to make massive change in the world? Well, in that, you know? I think in that age group in this country, especially most people are at bars. Yeah. And this is one of the things I wanted to talk about is like, you have to be in the search. If you're not already searching, start searching right now. I don't care if you're just searching for what's my name mean. That's, that was the beginning of my search. The most important thing that they taught me was the give back. But if you structure your life around the give back, everything else will fall into place. There has to be something inside of you that says, well, whether nobody else does it, I'm still gonna do something. Right? And I find that in our generation, there's not a lot of people that are willing to say, I'm going to put myself on the line. Start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. My dad was a go herder. And then he changed the face of the nation and the continent, man. It doesn't matter where you start, it's where you end. And how you get to the end? By starting. Like if you don't start, you're not even in the race. And he says, I want you to know something. It's not the mistake. It's what you do after the mistakes they'll remember you for. It. 